Hello everyone, good day. Welcome once again to the Ecotourism Journey channel. Thank you very much everyone for watching my videos and patronizing the Ecotourism Journey. If this is your first time in my channel, please don't forget to click subscribe button below. Kindly hit also the like and bell icon so that you will be notified for the new uploaded videos. This video is an instructional resource in response to the new normal of delivering academic requirements. In this lesson, it emphasizes the history, culture and tourism in Region 4B or Mimaropa region. Likewise, this is one of the course intended learning outcomes of Philippine culture and tourism geography. Please relax and enjoy while learning at the same time. What are the objectives? At the end of this lesson, you will be able to 1. Describe brief history, culture and geographical features of Region 4B. 2. Describe basic economic activities of each province in the region. 3. Introduce some tourist destinations in the region. 4. Promote tourist destinations on a regional level. Region 4B. Mimaropa Region. Mimaropa was formerly known as the Southwestern Tagalog Region, it was formerly designated as Region 4B until 2016. This is one of the two regions having no land borders together with Eastern Visayas. Mimaropa region, together with Calabarzon, were officially created with the partitioning of Region 4 Southern Tagalog into the two regions. Its purpose includes promoting efficiency in the government, accelerating social and economic development and improving public services in the provinces covered. The name is an acronym combination of its constituent provinces, Occidental Mindoro, Oriental Mindoro, Marinduque, Romblon and Palawan. Province of Marinduque. It is an island province located in southwestern Tagalog region or Mimaropa with the municipality of Boac as capital. The province of Marinduque was ranked number one by the Philippine National Police and Security Forces as the 2013 most peaceful province of the country. Furthermore, for almost 200 years, the province is home to one of the oldest religious festivals of the country, the Moriones celebrated every Holy Week. History. The most accepted theory of the etymology of the province's name is a hispanized corruption of either Malindig or Malindug, which means stand tall. This is in reference to a potentially active volcano in the southern section of the island, the Mount Malindig. The island which the natives call Manolo is named Mindoro by the Spaniards, and that of Malindig was called Marinduque. During the Spanish and early American occupations, Marinduque was part of Balayan province, now Batangas in the 16th century. Mindoro in the 17th century, and had a brief period as an independent province in 1901, when the Americans arrived. In 1945, combined American and Filipino troops liberated the province from the Japanese forces. Two government agencies were stationed in the province during the American period, the Philippine Commonwealth Army and the Philippine Constabulary. Geography. Marinduque is considered as the geographical center of the Philippine archipelago by the Luzon Datum of 1911. The province is a heart-shaped island with a total land area of 952.58 square kilometers, situated between Tayabas Bay in the north and Sibuyan Sea to the south. It is separated from the Bondic Peninsula in Quezon and west of Marinduque is Tablas Strait which separates it from Mindoro Island. Some of the smaller islands to the northeast are Polo Island, Manawea Island, and Mompong Island. Southwest portion includes the Trace Reyes Islands and Elephant Island. The north of the island is the province of Romblon. The Verde Island Passage is the center of the world's marine biodiversity, a protected marine area, are also within Marinduque's provincial waters. The highest peak in Marinduque is Mount Malindig, a potentially active stratovolcano with an elevation of 1,157 meters above sea level. Demographics. The population of Marinduque in the 2015 census was 234,521 people with Roman Catholicism as predominant religion. The version of Tagalog spoken in Marinduque has been described as the root from which modern national forms of speech have sprung. A Visaya language spoken in Romblon, just south of Marinduque. Kinaray A is also spoken in the province. Economy. Marinduque is an agricultural province, primarily growing rice and coconuts. Handicrafts from Marinduque are also exported to different parts of the world, and fishing is another important part of the economy. A significant role in Marinduque's economy is also played by tourism, especially during the Lenten season. 
Butterflies are raised for export to countries in both Europe and the Americas. Locally, live butterflies are released in celebration on different occasions, such as birthdays, weddings, and some corporate events. Transportation. Currently, Marinduque is served by direct Cebu Pacific flights to and from Manila and Marinduque Airport which is located in Masiga. The province is also served by a seaport in Balanacan transporting cargo and passengers to and from Lucina in Quezon Province. There is also a daily boat trip from General Luna in Quezon Province to Santa Cruz and vice versa which stops at Manawea Island to drop off cargo and passengers. Tourism and Culture the Moriones Festival is an annual festival, locally known as, Morionen. Celebrated from March to April annually. A parade of people dressed as, Morions, can be seen on the main road connecting the towns of the island. Boac and Santa Cruz, the biggest towns in the province, shows a reenactment in the evening of the actual events. Marinduque is home to the Kalutang, a musical instrument made of two pieces of wood that produce different note ranges depending on its size. In 2011, the Kalutang instrument was cited by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts as one of the intangible cultural heritage of the Philippines. This is under the traditional craftsmanship category that the government may nominate in the UNESCO intangible cultural heritage lists. Manawea Island is one of the best tourist spots in the province famous for its long stretch of powdery white sand beach and turquoise waters teeming with marine life. The beach front is arrayed with cottages and lush coconut trees with a great view of the looming mountains of the mainland. Tourists visiting can enjoy things in the island includes kayaking, boating, paddle boarding and jet skiing. Malbog Sulphur Spring. This is another popular tourist spot in Marinduque situated at the foot of Mount Malindig, the source of Sulphur Stream. Sulphur Spring pools can be found inside the property which believed to have therapeutic benefits and natural healing properties. It is a relaxing place surrounded with green trees but as of the nature of sulfur, it has some unwanted smell that could stick for days. Marinduque Hot Spring Resort. This also offers a perfect alternative for visitors who wants to avoid the unwanted smell of sulfur. Bathala Cave. This is a cave system on the jungle-clad mountainside of Marinduque, comprises of seven caves but only four are open for the general public. These are the church, python, secret, and cemetery. The church is the biggest cave with stalactites and stalagmites which resembles to the church's interior. BAOC Cathedral. This is the 18th century Roman Catholic Church and the oldest one in Marinduque, a home to Our Lady of Immaculate Concepcion as patron saint. This church was built on 1792 with a Filipino-Hispanic Gothic architectural design, the facade is made of rough terracotta and bell tower made of adobe stones. Province of Occidental Mindoro is a province in the Philippines located in Mimaropa region with the municipality of Mamburao as capital. History. Mindoro Island was originally known to the ancients as Ma'ai. It was formally called Mate, and known to the Chinese traders before the coming of the Spanish. It was a major anchorage in the Southeast Asia trade route during the pre-Philippines period. In 1570, the Spanish began to explore the island and named it Mina de Oro or Mine of Gold after finding some of the precious metal. The Mangians, as they are now anthropologically known, do not have a warrior society. They are a peaceful, shy but friendly people. They are rarely known to be hostile, and have had no significant record of violent conflict with other people in the entire history of the province. The revolutionary political reigns were held by the elite, who also held the same reigns under the Spaniards and later under the Americans. In 1950, the province of Mindoro was divided into Oriental Mindoro and Occidental Mindoro by virtue of Republic Act No. 505. Geography. Occidental Mindoro covers a total area of 5,865.71 square kilometers occupying the western section of the Mindoro Island with 11 municipalities. The province is bordered on the east by the province of Oriental Mindoro and on the south by the Mindoro Strait. Batangas is to the north, separated by the Verde Island Passage, a protected marine area and the center of the center of the world's marine biodiversity. General land surface features that characterize Occidental Mindoro are mountains, rivers, hills, valleys, wide plains and some small freshwater lakes. The taller mountains can be found in the interior that it shares with Oriental Mindoro on the two central peaks, Mount Halkan in the north, and Mount Baco in the south. 
The province is also a home to one of the more popular coral reefs in the Philippines, Apo Reef. Demographics. The population of Occidental Mindoro in the 2015 census was 487,414 people with Roman Catholicism as predominant religion. Major languages spoken are Tagalog and the Mangyan languages as well as Ilocano, Visayan, and Bicolano by people who migrated the province. The indigenous people in the province are the Mangyans consisting of seven distinct tribes. They occupy the Futhials and interiors. The Mangyan have inhabited the island since prehistory. They are believed to have originally traveled from Indonesia and settled down for good in the island. There is much evidence, historical and geophysical, that the Mangyan tribes formerly lived near the coastlines, wishing to preserve their way of life. Economy. Occidental Mindoro is an agricultural area devoted to the production of food with rice production as primary staple crop. Wetland or lowland rice is a rainy season crop, heavily dependent on water and therefore produced from July, planting season to October, harvest season. Tobacco, onions, garlic and vegetables are grown during the dry season since they are not water-intensive crops. Mangoes, cashew nuts, cooking bananas and some other fruits grown in upland orchards are among the other exports of Occidental Mindoro. Peanuts are also grown in some parts of the province, as well as cassava, sweet potatoes, ginger and other minor cultivars. Forest resources include timber and minerals like gold, copper, silver, lime for making cement, and greenstones for ornaments are available. Transportation. The only airport in Mindoro is in San Jose, with daily flights to and from Manila offering only one flight each way per day. The island of Mindoro can be accessed by boat from either Batangas to Calapan and Puerto Galera from Cataclan to Roxas, Oriental Mindoro, or from Coron to San Jose. The shipping service from Batangas is RORO at about 3 hours or fast ferry, about 1 hour and a half open 24 hours. Dimple Star, a bus company runs regular buses and vans between the towns on Mindoro, also plying from Cubao Station in Manila all the way to San Jose Occidental. Tourism. Occidental Mindoro is one of the provinces in the Philippines offering adventure and natural attractions as well as culture and heritage. Mount Iglet Baco National Park. Located in Sablayan, Occidental Mindoro is home to the critically endangered Tamara or water buffalo. Tourists can climb to the summit of this park that will lead into the richness of the island with rich in flora and fauna. Travelers will also have a chance to learn about the rich culture of the indigenous Mangians who inhabit the mountains. Apo Reef National Park. This is located in Sablayan, Occidental Mindoro known as one of the favorite diving sites in the province. The place is considered as the second biggest contiguous reef system worldwide with incredible diversity of marine life, just after the Great Barrier Reef. Apo Reef is a protected sanctuary because of its beauty and bounty hoping to sustain through proper implementation of ecotourism. Prezing Park. Located in Sablayan is one of the historical tourist spots in Occidental Mindoro. The park is also good for sightseeing, education, and extreme adventures like rappelling, wall climbing, zip lining, and many more. The Looming Simbahan. Located in Sablayan, Occidental Mindoro is one of the oldest churches in the country, dating back to the Spanish times. According to some locals, the church had underground tunnels used by Japanese soldiers as route during World War II before it was renovated. Pafali Falls. This is located in Abra de Ilog, Occidental Mindoro considered as favorite destination for adventure and trekking. It measures around 60 feet high and cascades lazily on the face of a cliff with boulders surround its deep pool used as diving platforms. Province of Oriental Mindoro. This is a province in the Philippines located on the island of Mindoro under Mimaropa region in Luzon with the city of Calapan as capital. Oriental Mindoro is touted as the country's emerging eco-tourism destination, dubbed as the center for marine ecosystem and biodiversity. Most of the endemic species in the Philippines are found in the Verde Island Passage between Mindoro Island and the main island of Luzon. UNESCO declared Puerto Galera a biosphere reserve under its Man and the Biosphere program in the 1970s. The Verde Island Passage is at the apex of the so-called Coral Triangle, the Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia. It has as distinction of being the center of the center of the world's marine biodiversity, and the center of the center of marine biodiversity. History. 
After World War II, reconstruction and rehabilitation of infrastructure and economy took place on the island, which then constituted a single province. In the decades after the war, Mindoro attracted settlers from overpopulated provinces in the Philippines. Apart from the hope to become landowners or to have better tenancy conditions, the Hukbalahap Rebellion in central Luzon was an important factor for migration. Under the Settlement Program of the National Resettlement and Rehabilitation Administration or NARRA, founded in 1954. Some families from central Luzon were settled in the Bongabong Pinamalayan area, since then, new settlers continue to migrate to Mindoro until today. Geography. Oriental Mindoro covers a total area of 4,238.38 square kilometers, occupying the eastern section of Mindoro Island with 14 municipalities. The province is bordered by the Verde Island Passage to the north, by Marinduque, Maestre de Campo, Tablas Strait. The rest of Remblan to the east, by Semirara and the rest of Kaluya Islands, Antique to the south, and by Occidental Mindoro to the west. The western portion of the province is mountainous or rugged, while the east has hills and flood plains. Mount Halkin, standing 2,582 meters above sea level, is the 18th highest mountain in the country and is the province's and island's highest peak. Lake Nogen, the fifth largest lake in the country with an area of approximately 8,125 hectares of open water, is located at the northeastern part of the province. Demographics. The population of Oriental Mindoro in the 2015 census was 844,059 people with Roman Catholicism as predominant religion. Tagalog is widely spoken in the province. Other languages spoken are Ilocano and Visayan. Dialects of the Mangyan language are Arayan, Alanyan, Buhid, Hananu, and Tadiawan. Because of the Roro trips coming from Cataclan, a few people from the southern part can understand Hiligaynon. The indigenous people of Oriental Mindoro are the Mangyans consisting of seven distinct tribes occupying the interior and highlands. They are believed to have originally traveled from Indonesia, and settled down for good in the island since prehistory. Economy. Oriental Mindoro's rich and arable land is suitable for agriculture and the province is largely rural. It produces large quantities of rice, corn, coconut, vegetables and fruits like calamansi, banana, rambutan, meringue, lanzones and durian. For that, Oriental Mindoro is also known as the rice granary and fruit basket of southern Tagalog. For 2019, the province has been one of the top producers of rice becoming a source of rice for the National Food Authority's rice procurement target. Transportation. Port of Calapan is the primary seaport serving the city connected through routes to the port of Batangas City in mainland Luzon. The city of Calapan also has an airport, the Calapan Airport, classified as a secondary airport. This is used for general aviation handling mostly small planes and choppers with regular trips from Manila Domestic Airport. Motorized tricycles are a common mode of transport, jeepneys and vans serves as transportation options to other municipalities using provincial road. Tourism. Access from Luzon via the Batangas ports mostly goes through the Verde Island Passage to reach Puerto Galera, the key entry point to Oriental Mindoro. In November 2004, Puerto Galera was voted a member of the UNESCO affiliated, the club of the most beautiful bays in the world. Puerto Galera features a natural harbor which also protects ships, yachts and bancas from strong typhoons sweeping in from the Pacific. Puerto Galera, known for white sand beaches and the accompanying honky-tonk bar scene on some key beaches, dive sites with a biodiversity of marine life. Mount Halkin. Located in Baco is towering 8,488 feet above sea level, a popular for mountain climbing and trekking. Mount Halkin has been also a place for all local and migratory birds, allows tourists a birdwatching and sightseeing activities. Hidden Paradise. The attraction consists of a natural spring with a swimming pool and picnic cottages. It is located in Baco, and can be reached in 45 minutes by taking a jeepney bound for the Calapan Market. Tamara Falls. The 423-foot waterfalls, situated alongside the road located in Villaflor, Puerto Galera. This is actually a series of cascading and asymmetrical falls, leading to the Grand One, dropping to a frothy waterbed below. White Sand Beach. The white sandy strips of this beach offer excellent opportunities for swimming. Resorts in this area provide entertainment facilities for tourists greater amusement and leisure located in Puerto Galera. 
Province of Palawan. It is an archipelago each province of the Philippines that is located in the region of Mimaropa, the largest province in the country in terms of total area of jurisdiction. Its capital is the city of Puerto Princesa, but the city is governed independently from the province as a highly urbanized city. History. Palawan was determined by a team of researchers led by Dr. Robert B. Fox historically. They found evidence in the Taban Caves that humans have lived in Palawan for more than 50,000 years. They also found human bone fragments, from an individual known as Taban Man, in the municipality of Quezon, as well as tools and other artifacts. The northern Calamians Islands were the first to come under Spanish authority, it was later declared a province separate from the Palawan mainland. Before the 18th century, Spain began to build churches enclosed by garrisons for protection against Moro raids in selected municipalities. In 1902, after the Philippine-American War, the Americans established civil rule in northern Palawan, calling it the province of Paragua. In 1903, the province was reorganized to include the southern portions and renamed Palawan, and Puerto Princesa declared as its capital. After the Japanese invasion, according to Stephen L. Moore, pro-Allied sentiment was strong, but Filipino guerrillas worked against the Japanese. During the first phase of the Battle of Leyte Gulf, just off the coast of Palawan, two United States Navy attacked a Japanese cruiser task force. It was led by Admiral Takeo Kurita, sinking his flagship in which he survived, Atago, and her sister ship Maya. The island was liberated from the Japanese Imperial Forces February 28 and April 22, 1945 during the invasion of Palawan. Geography. The province is composed of the long and narrow Palawan Island comprising 13 mainland municipalities and 10 island towns. Plus a number of other smaller islands surrounding it, totaling roughly 1,780 islands and islets. The Calamians group of islands to the northeast consists of Buswanga, Koran, Kulyan, and Linapakan Islands. Balabak Island is located off the southern tip, separated from Borneo by the Balabak Strait. Palawan also covers Kuyo Islands in the Sulu Sea. The disputed Spratly Islands, located a few hundred kilometers to the west, are considered part of Palawan by the Philippines, locally called the Kalayan Group of Islands. The islands of Palawan stretch between Mindoro in the northeast and Borneo in the southwest. It lies between South China Sea and Sulu Sea. The province is named after its largest island, Palawan Island measuring 450 kilometers long, and 50 kilometers. Palawan's almost 2,000 kilometers of irregular coastline is lined with rocky coves and sugar-white sandy beaches. The terrain is a mix of coastal plain, craggy foothills, valley deltas, and heavy forest interspersed with riverine arteries that serve as irrigation. Demographic. The population of Palawan in the 2015 census was 849,469 people with Roman Catholicism as predominant religion. When Puerto Princesa is included for geographical purposes, the population is 1,104,585 people, the province is a melting pot of 87 different cultural groups and races. Influx of migrants from other parts of the Philippines, particularly from Muslim Mindanao, accounts for the high population growth annually concentrated in Balabac. There are 52 languages and dialects in the province, with Tagalog being spoken by more than 50% of the people. Languages native to the islands are Kayanan and Palawano and Kinare A is also present and spoken. In the south of Palawan during the occupation of the Sulu Sultanate, Taushug was a lingua franca amongst the minority Islamfied ethnic groups like Molbog and Taushug. Economy. Palawan's economy is basically agricultural. The major crops are rice, corn, coconut and livestock. Mineral resources include nickel, copper, manganese, and chromite. Lauding is also a major industry. Palawan has one of the richest fishing grounds in the country supplying almost 50% of fish to Manila. Having natural gas reserves of approximately 30,000 trillion cubic feet, the province is the only oil-producing province in the country. In addition, tourism is also a thriving sector, having received 1.8 million tourists in 2018 and increasing year by year. Transportation. The Puerto Princesa International Airport is the only international airport in Palawan, serving as the main gateway to the province. There are other airports includes in the municipalities of Coron, Buswanga, El Nido, 
San Vicente, Magsayase, Taytay, Roxas, Balabac, Rizal and Bataraza. Port of Puerto Princesa is the main seaport in Palawan, serving both cargo and passenger traffic to the island. Scheduled passenger ferry services are running weekly from Manila to this port managed by the Philippine Ports Authority. Other seaports include in the province are Port of Coron, Port of El Nido and Port of Manging ISDA. Buses, vans and other mode of land transportations are also available using and plying the provincial roads. Tourism. Palawan is biogeographically part of Sundaland, with a fauna and flora related to that found in Borneo. Among the many endemic species are the Palawan peacock pheasant, mouse deer, pangolin, bearded pig, and Palawan birdwing. In the forests and grasslands, the air resonates with the songs of more than 200 kinds of birds. Over 600 species of butterflies flutter around the mountains and fields of Palawan, attracted to some 1500 host plants found here. Sea turtles usually go to the nutrient-rich coastal waters of Palawan to rest and look for food. Palawan, the only Philippine island sighted, is rated by the Condé Nast traveler readers as the most beautiful island in the world. It was also rated by the National Geographic Traveler magazine as the best island destination in East and Southeast Asia region in 2007. And the equal 27th best island in the world having, incredibly beautiful natural seascapes and landscapes. The island has had a biosphere reserve status since the early 1990s, showing local interest for conservation and sustainable development. Seven lakes surrounded by craggy limestone cliffs attract hundreds of nature lovers to Koran reefs in northern Palawan, near the town of Koran. Buswanga Island, whose main town is Koran, is the jump-off point for numerous dive operators. They range in depth from the surface to 40 meters. This large variety offers exciting wreck exploration for enthusiasts, from novice divers and snorkelers and recreational divers to experienced tech divers. The aquatic views from the sunken Japanese warships off Koran Island are listed in Forbes Traveler magazine's top 10 best scuba sites in the world. Puerto Princesa Subterranean River National Park, the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, features large limestone karst landscape with an underground river. One of the river's distinguishing features is that it emerges directly into the sea, and its lower portion is subject to tidal influences. The site contains a full, mountain-to-sea, ecosystem and has some of the most important forests in Asia, as well as a center for biodiversity conservation. Tubataha Reef Marine Park A unique example of an atoll reef with a very high density of marine species, serving as a nesting site for birds and marine turtles. The site is an excellent example of a pristine coral reef with a spectacular 100 meters perpendicular wall, extensive lagoons and two coral islands. Kalawit Game Preserve and Wildlife Sanctuary. This is located in Kalawit Island, Buswanga, Palawan. A game reserve and wildlife sanctuary of exotic African animals and endangered endemic animals of Palawan. This was initiated in response to the appeal of the International Union for the Conservation of Nature to help save African wildlife. Management of the area is the responsibility of the Office of the Palawan Council of Sustainable Development PCSD. Rasa Island Wildlife Sanctuary. This 1,983-hectare protected area located in the municipality of Nara, Palawan. This is a nesting ground of the endemic Philippine cockatoo or katala. It also a harbors other rare bird species and marine turtles. Province of Remblan. This is an archipelagic province of the Philippines located in the Mimaropa region with municipality of Remblan as capital. Its main islands include Tablas, the largest, which covers nine municipalities, Cebuyan with its three towns, and smaller island municipalities including Remblan. Archaeological artifacts recovered by the National Museum in 1936 indicate that the aborigines of Remblan already have a rich and advanced culture. According to legend, the name, Remblan, was derived from the word Nagalumium, which pertains to a chicken in the act of sitting on its eggs on a nest. This eventually evolved to Lomlon, and later on to Donblan, the name reported by Spanish chronicler before finally evolving to Remblan. History. Remblan's aboriginal inhabitants were the Negritos from Panay and Mangians from Mindoro, who settled in the islands during the pre-colonial period. Recollect missionaries arrived in Remblan to establish Catholic missions and settlements, they helped the Spanish authorities establish peace and order. 
They also built massive forts, churches and watchtowers in the province, such as Fort San Jose in Banton and Fort San Andres in Remblan. Upon the restoration of peace and order in the province following the Philippine-American War, the Americans established civilian government in the islands. The islands became one of the centers of resistance movement against the Japanese led by the Free Panay guerrilla forces. Geography Remblan is strategically situated at the center of the Philippine archipelago comprises 17 municipalities which generally mountainous. Geographically part of the Visayas, it is composed of three major islands namely, Tablas, Cebuyan, Remblan and 17 smaller islands. It is surrounded by deep waters, and is bounded by Masbate in the east, Mindoro in the west, Marinduque in the north and Panay in the south. The islands are dispersed and accessible only via sea transportation except for Tablas Island where a domestic airport is located in the municipality of Alcantara. Demographics The population of Remblan in the 2015 census was 292,781 people with Roman Catholicism as the predominant religion. It ranks fourth among the five provinces of the MIMAROPA region in terms of population and represents 9.9% .9 of the region's population. The languages of Remblan, as well as all languages native to the Philippines, belong to the Austronesian language family. Unlike other islands or provinces in the Philippines where all local languages are classifiable under the same subgroup of languages. Each of the three languages of Remblan, Romblomanon, Anhan and Asi, actually belongs to a different subgroup of the Visayan language group. Romblomanon belongs to the central Visayan subgroup, which spans from Waray Waray in Samar and Leyte, through Masbateño and Sorsoganan. Anhan, on the other hand, belongs to the western Visayan subgroup, which includes Kinarea and Aklan. Economy. Agriculture is the main industry in Remblan. Coconut is the most cultivated crop as well as root crops, vegetables and fruits. San Agustin has the most extensive area with coconut plants followed by Remblan and Cahidiocan. Fishing industry is a major enterprise as Remblan is surrounded by water on all sides. Fisherfolks unloads the day's catch from their nets. The fishing grounds of Remblan are a migratory path of fish from Sulu and Visayan seas passing Tablas Strait, Cebuyan Sea and Remblan Pass. Because the province has a great potential for aquamarine development, the province implemented a coastal and resource management program. Livestock development and poultry production are also viable in the province but relies on the export of supplies from nearby provinces. Marble is the most significant mineral deposit of Remblan, the most renowned product of the province with high quality and comes in shade, green, red and pink. Transportation. Remblan province is connected by a network of national and provincial roads. The primary modes of land transportation in the province are jeepneys, minibuses and tricycles that serves inter-municipal movements. Sea transportation is the primary mode of transportation linking Remblan with Luzon and islands in the Visayas. Inter-island ferries, Roro, and cargo ships from Manila, the southern Luzon ports of Batangas City, and Lucena City in Quezon province. The province is also served with Roro from Roxas, Oriental Mindoro, and Roxas City in Capiz linking the province to the rest of the country. Tugden Airport in Alcantara is the only airport in the province and is less than an hour away from Metro Manila with flights four times weekly. At Barangaya Zagra, San Fernando in Cebuyan Island, there is also a small airstrip that caters to tourism and general aviation. Tourism. Being an archipelago, Remblan has numerous beaches and dive sites. The sea surrounding Cresta del Gallo is a famous diving site teeming with marine life. Among its best white sand beaches are Bonbon, Cobrador and Tiambon Beach in Remblan, Makat Ang, Tabunan and Tambak Beach in Banton. Mount Gidding Gidding in Cebuyan, the province's tallest mountain, is considered as one of the most difficult climbs in the Philippines and is thus a major destination of local mountain climbers because of its steep and jagged summit. Aside from the pre-colonial Guyangan cave system in Banton, the province also has several heritage sites built during the Spanish colonial period. In Remblan town, the forts of San Andres and Santiago served as fortifications against Muslim pirates in the 17th century. While the St. Joseph Cathedral and Belfry houses a centuries-old image of the Santo Niño de Cebu or the Holy Child. Both heritage sites were declared national cultural treasures by the National Museum as well as the Spanish-era bridges. 
Every second week of January, Remblan town celebrates the Feast of the Santo Niño de Cebu, also known as the Binary Festival. To summarize the lesson, this gives insights on the brief history, geography, economic importance, and tourism destinations. Specifically, this video lesson encourages everyone to 1. Discover culture and history on a regional and provincial level. 2. Explore the geographical and topographical features of each provinces in Region 4B. Mimaropa Region. 3. Travel domestically and enjoy the beauty of people, culture, and natural resources. 4. Support domestic tourism for cultural and economic sustainability. 5. Be proud of our own characteristics and diversity. 6. Be a responsible tourist for environmental sustainability. I believe that this video is very much useful as we embrace the culture of the country and its tourism activities in the new normal. I wish that everything in this video means a lot to all of you. For further information, please do not hesitate to post message at the comment section below. Please click subscribe and bell icon so that you will be updated for the next uploaded videos. Thank you very much. God bless.